Today I'm going to show you how to change the thermal paste on your GPU, which is crucial when it comes to the longevity of your card, especially when buying off the used market. And you don't have to be a computer wizard in order to be able to do this. So today I'm going to show you how to. Hey, what's going on guys? My name is JD from JD Tech here and welcome back to the channel where we discuss PC passion reviews, guides, mods, and more. So if you're into that sort of thing, consider subscribing and checking out the rest of the channel. So a couple of reasons why you might want to change the thermal paste on your GPU is maybe it's an older card, maybe it was used a lot, maybe it was mined on, maybe you bought it used, maybe you've just had it for a while. Whatever the case is, a good place to start is changing the thermal paste on your GPU to ensure the longevity and lifespan of your GPU. It just helps. And if you're trying to lower temps, a good place to start is the thermal paste. Doesn't mean that's the one and only answer to solving your temperature problem, but it's a good place to start. Now, before you get into any of this, you will be voiding the warranty by taking apart the GPU. Just so you know that. So you have to be comfortable with voiding the warranty on your GPU. If you're not comfortable with that, then this isn't for you. But I don't want to scare you because this does not require some sort of computer wizardry to take it apart. So you should be perfectly fine taking it apart and you should be competent in doing so. So this video should help you with that. So the tools that you'll need for the job is a precision screwdriver set. And you can get one of these from Walmart for like seven bucks, or you can get like the iFixit kit for about 20 bucks on Amazon. Doesn't really matter. You don't have to spend that much money to have something that's going to be able to take apart the GPU or just having a small screwdriver, just making sure that these fit nicely without stripping the screws. Also, you're going to need some thermal paste. There's all sorts of different types of thermal paste that you can apply to your GPU, but I like to go with the Noctua NTH1. It's a pretty well-performing thermal paste, and I use it for all my thermal paste applications. You'll also need some rubbing alcohol, so that will be used to rub off the thermal paste, and you'll need a paper towel to put the alcohol onto and take off the thermal paste. Now, if the thermal paste is really dry and really caked on there uh, you'll need some sort of heat gun or a blow dryer whatever it's going to spew hot air and pretty much heat up the thermal paste and then wipe it off with the rubbing alcohol and paper towel now coolers are built differently all right some of them have back plates like this some of them don't but they all follow a general process that's pretty much similar to each other so as long as you can replicate that that's perfectly fine now you might also want a magnetic parts tray just to put all your screws onto you don't absolutely need it but it does keep them all in one place which is pretty nice all right so not every gpu has a back plate but we'll be taking this one off in case yours does so we'll just start around here and all you have to do is just literally unscrew these it's not hard at all these are all the same screws you can just tell all around here and also helps having a magnetic tip for your screwdriver and it won't really matter what order you have the screws in over on the side over here just as long as you know they're the same screws and you know where those screws are being applied to so i know all these screws right here are going into the back plate or holding the back plate into the card now we can take this off that's the back plate right there and that's pretty simple there's no screws or anything attached to that now we can see we have the card here. This is the actual GPU right here. This is the PCB, the printed circuit board, where you see all the little tiny modules and components that actually make up the GPU. That's our little void warranty sticker right there. So we will be unscrewing that just so you guys know. And this right here, these four screws will be holding in the cooler. Uh, there's no other screws on the back over here. So these four will be the next screws that we go into. Take that one out. So these screws are definitely different from the other ones. So we'll know where these go. Okay. And that comes off just like that. Now we can see that there are some attached wires over here. Um, that happens with pretty much every cooler that uses fans. So we'll just detach these. And we'll know where these go by just lining up the cooler and knowing where the wires go. So that one goes right there, that one goes right there. There's usually not that many wires when you're taking it apart, so it's usually pretty simple. This is a base plate right here that's going over some of the other modules on the GPU here. Um, you don't have to worry about that. You can take this off if you want to. Uh, there's thermal pads underneath here. There's no thermal paste you have to worry about over here. The thermal paste we're worried about is right here on top of the chip. So what we're gonna do here, grab ourselves a paper towel fold it up in a square. This thermal paste still looks good on here. And I'm just gonna pour in just a little bit of rubbing alcohol onto the paper towel. And then we're just gonna pretty much just 
take it off right here. Now you can use a Q-tip if you want to get into like uh, the smaller little areas, which I might actually end up doing. And don't forget to take off the thermal paste on the cooler itself. Now there's a little bit of thermal paste still around the corners over here, so I might have to grab a Q-tip. You don't absolutely necessarily have to get it off, but I would like to. All right, got my Q-tip. You know, just do the best job that you can really. Now we'll just apply our thermal paste. We want to give enough that's going to be able to spread over the entire chip. Don't worry about putting too much thermal paste on there. It'll be perfectly fine. They say usually rice grain, but I like to put a little bit more depending on the size of the chip here. So that should be fine, honestly. So now what we'll do is like the way we took it off, we'll just plug these back in. The one over here and the one over here. All right, there we go. All right, so we'll see where those four screws that we unscrewed before connecting the cooler to the GPU, uh, we gotta make sure those screw holes are aligned and they are. We'll take these and put them back in. I like to go in a crisscross formation just so that we evenly apply pressure. That's not super critical. But it's just something I like to do. All right, let's just make sure the cooler is on here nice and sturdy. Looking pretty good. And now we're just gonna put on the back plate. That pretty much just lines up where it was before. And then all those screws that we had earlier, we're just gonna put back into the back plate. Now there's only two different types of screws with this entire teardown process. That's with the back plate. If you don't have a back plate, chances are you only have one type of screw to remove. And you see how easy it is to actually unscrew and take apart a GPU because there's not much to take apart. All right, now that the last screw is in place, we'll check and see if there's any temperature difference with the new thermal paste. I don't know if there will be much since the thermal paste looked pretty good on this cooler, but it's worth a shot. Either way, this is for demonstration, not really changing the thermal performance of this GPU in particular. So after reapplying the new thermal paste, we have about a one degree delta in terms of temperature, which isn't too much, but I really wasn't even expecting that much of a difference because before the thermal paste was just fine. So if you want to see more tutorials like this about PC hardware and stuff, let me know. I have a whole playlist right here in case you're just getting your hands into PC hardware. And if you guys want to help support the channel, I have merch like this canvas pieces like that and I also have patreon in the description below for exclusive bonus content and if you're new here consider subscribing and checking out the rest of the channel thank you all for watching guys I'll catch you in the next one